Hey everybody, it's Chris here with Off-Road Farm and on this video today I'm going to show you how we're going to reinstall the pinions. Now keep in mind this is not a re-gear, right? So I'm using my existing ring, my existing pinion. All I did was just replace the bearings because I ruined them. So this is a little bit simpler than if you're doing a full re-gear. I don't take the time to check my gear pattern. I mean, it's been in this truck for, I don't know how long, and it's been wearing fine. All the teeth looked pretty good. I didn't see any major chipping or any major wear. So I'm not worrying about a ring pattern. So kind of keep that in mind. This is not exactly how you would re-gear, but if you just want to throw a carrier and a pinion in, you can kind of follow along. First thing we need to do is we need to install these inner axle seals. So just take your seal, put a little bit of RTV silicone around the edge, and go ahead and drive it in. Now I do recommend that you actually install your long side tube seal second. Put your short side seal in first because you have to install that one through the long side tube. Now this can be kind of difficult if you don't have any help. I didn't have any help, it wasn't a lot of fun, but I did finally get it installed. But once you do that, see now you actually use a pipe through that seal on the short side. And since it's so much shorter, it's a lot easier to control. So you don't damage the seal that you just installed. So just take your time, make sure you get it seated well, and then afterwards, clean up those bearing surfaces. Don't let any RTV hang around. We don't want to throw off the bearings for our carrier. Now that we got everything cleaned up, it's time to put our new races in. So first thing I'm gonna do, lube it up with just a little bit of oil. I went ahead and I threw my race in the freezer for a couple hours. I found a uh, driver here that fits it almost perfectly and we'll see if we can't get it started. If you don't have a driver that fits your race, don't worry. Just take your old race, turn it around, and now you can use that to drive your race in. We're going to do the same thing for the pinion on the inside, but we got to remember those shims that we took out. So I've already put that one in and I got those shims behind it. So now we're ready to start piecing everything back together. All right, now that we got the pinion back in. This one did not have a crush sleeve, instead it had these shims. Slide those on. Then we're going to take our new bearing that we've lightly oiled. Slide it in. And it also had a shim or a thrust washer behind the bearing. Now we're going to get our new 1350 yoke. So we got the axle strap down on this side. That's the one that's trying to rear up on me. Got the new yoke in. I'm using my old pinion nut. I'm gonna try to torque it down. Well, we had to strap down this other side. See if we have any better luck. Now this pinion does not have a crush sleeve just has these shims in here. So I measured it and we're about 0.028 and I didn't get it all the way to 250 pounds and we couldn't even move it. So 
So we're going to try to the first thing we're going to do is we're going to double it. Let me just find the right shim here. So we're going to put, we're going to double it. We're going to put 0.028 back on top of what we already have. And we're going to try it and see how that goes. Uh, pretty simple. All we do is we put our shim. right on top of our other shims. Now we're gonna go ahead and put everything back together. New washer, old nut. So already, pretty tight and we're not even close to any kind of torque on this thing. I got this wonderful torque sheet off of the Dana 60 Bible. You guys check that out. It's got torque values for everything. But our pinion bearing preload new needs to be between 20 to 30. So we're gonna add more shims now. I added another 0.024. So there's right around 175 foot-pounds. So not only are we tight, we still have some in-play there. So that's probably going to be too much. So we removed one of those original .014 shims. And we're going to try it again. Finally got 250. But we got way too little preload. It's all right, we're getting closer. Yeah, it's basically zero. It's a good idea once you start playing with these shims, write everything down and make a list keep track of it. Too high, too high, and then we're too low. So we can look at our totals and we can figure out maybe about where we need to be last time. So 51 preload was way too high. 57 preload was way too low. It was zero essentially. So now we're going to try to shoot for 53. So we're going to do a 0.03 and a 0.023. All right. So after finally going through about eight different variations, I finally got my preload just about perfect. It's right around 25 inch pounds. Just got a cheap inch pound meter that I got off of Amazon here. Here's your inch pound meter. So we want to put it on there. We just want to get it started. Turn it a few times. And now we're going to see where it's at. So now we just got to take all this back off and drive in our seal. So before you drive your seal, make sure you get your bearing in there. And then also your thrust washer behind that bearing. Now I put just, just a little bit of RTV on that. It looks like this old race from inside the pinion is actually going to fit that just about perfect. All right, looks like it's down all the way around. All right, got my seal in. Got my strap put back up here so I can torque everything down. Make sure I got my three shims on my pinion. Just going to put a little bit of light oil around the outside of 
this yolk. Also going to put just a little bit of oil on this seal. You get to listen to the dogs go nuts. I'll put some RTV in these splines. Just enough so that we don't get any oil coming out past our splines. Now we're going to put our yolk in. Now we're going to put on our washer. Alright, so we're going to get our new yolk nut and they're going to put on some high strength thread locker. Now, we're just going to torque it for the final time. There's 250 foot-pounds. Now the pinion's in. All we got left is the carrier. It's almost midnight, so I'm going to save that for another day. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. And if you want to see more videos like this, please hit the subscribe. You can check me out on Facebook at Off Road Farm and also on Instagram at Off Road Farm. I might want to add it this time that. Might be worth it to get one of those yoke tools, but I'm gonna try to make it work. <laughs>